Hello, first I'd like to thank Ninth Heretic for sharing these photos and others because uh, she's in Belgium and the connections to here in Sydney but to the ancient world we can follow these. So this is uh, uh, in Ghent in Belgium and this park here now might be easy to overlook the symbols connected here but there are quite a few and so especially this one. So let's pause a moment and well is what is this? What's going on here? Well, this is actually a Masonic symbolism, ancient symbolism, not net, well connected to the, the modern era, but very lots of ancient symbolism also connected to the quadrivium. And we'll have a look through there. There's a better one. So, okay, one. Even here, there's some very nice uh, Mason symbolism, and. Even this beauty, force, and sagas. Sorry, I don't know that pronunciation, but I got the translation of it. And to look at that, we begin. So this is Millionaire's Okay, the pronunciation, but translates to this is the Millionaire's Quarter, as it's called in Ghent, in Belgium. The original name, the name of the park, means outside the city walls. But the, both these statues were uh, created for the World Expo of 1913. And, but they will we'll connect to many other places, and we'll, especially here in Sydney. We'll have a look in a moment. So Sydney Masonic Centre. This is the, the centre there. We have the tower there. And this picture here, these three columns, can be directly connected to these three figures here. Uh, the tower itself there on 66 Goulburn Street, 432 feet high. Nice little hint there as well. But what we have in these three columns are what's called the three Greek orders of architecture. The Corinthian, with the acanthus leaves, the Doric, this very si the most simplest of these forms of columns, and the Ionic column with these uh, swirls here. Now they carry information and, and a long tradition, ancient tradition. And so in the museum, uh, we also have this tracing board and we have the same thing. The Corinthian column, just as we have here. The Ionic column, just as we have there. And the Doric column with the triglyph as well. Now that's an important feature as well, this what's called. Uh, but the origin of the Doric column comes from a simple wooden column, that like you know, pre-stone building. The oldest columns were made of wood, and this is like a now it's used in stone, but and especially on the Doric order. Well, it's basically the joint between the frames and uh, of of those columns there. But just as we see, the Doric order column. But what does what do these mean? So Doric, Ionic, Corinthian. Corinthian, Doric, and Ionic. Well, this is a. Uh, I now forget the name of the art, but you know, um, especially with the Renaissance, we had a rebirth of classical architecture through Vignolo and Palladio. Well, you can also look into. I just did a recent video on Da Vinci and the Vitruvian Man. We can connect through there the Roman architect Vitruvius, who detailed the origins and the proportions of these types of columns. So we have the Doric. Even notice for club. Okay, we'll come back to that there, the club, the Ionic order, and the Corinthian order, and they have meaning. And so the, the Doric column represents man or strength. It's the column of strength, and there's also connections to the five. So there are three Greek columns, and there are five Roman columns, and they have the five senses. So it's not really the feature there, but the Doric is the column, the male, the strength. The Ionic column with these simple swirls is the female or wisdom and it's also connected so for instance in ancient times the woman's beauty re was represented by very simple hairstyle and 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 less jewelry and that's why this uh, as we're opposed to the maiden who would have more jewelry should be more dressed up uh, and that's why the column of beauty or the corinthian column is this very ornate uh, form. There are other stories uh, and, and legends and, and connections to that as well, but Doric strength, the, ma the male, Ionic, the woman wisdom, and the Corinthian is beauty or the maiden, the virgin. 
Uh, Reg Monbassa, uh, uh, a musician and famous artist here, Mambo, well, even he, you know, the all-seeing eye, wisdom, strength, beauty. And we have here WSB, wisdom, strength, and beauty. You can even see the ionic wisdom, the Doric strength, and uh, uh, beauty. Why are there three male figures? Well, this is uh, in Freemasonry. We have the... the, the Lodge officers, which are connected to these three columns, and that's why we have the males there, so the wardens and so forth um, in there. Now, wisdom, strength, beauty, very strong Masonic connections. Well, that's what these columns, the, the, the maiden, the virgin, beauty, the man, strength, and the female, wisdom. Now, back up a moment, and we have the male carrying the club. Uh, we'll go back to the park there. Well, you see the, he's, he's even holding the club, so that's a, there's no mistaking that. Now, strength, wisdom and beauty and this connection, but this is very old. So again, the direct Ionic Corinthian and these connections and the orders of architecture. Uh, it's not just the columns, it's also the way they're decorated. So the... Okay, so for instance, here we see the Doric with the triglyph, and it tends to be simpler. As we go to the Ionic order, they'll have more sculptures and relief in there. And to the Corinthian order, where you'll see a very, much more elaborate temple design. So that's also another feature, the way that they're decorated and, and the features that they use within. The Corinthian, the Ionic and the Doric columns, we can see them at the Colosseum in Rome. And this is one of this is at least the oldest version I found where you have Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian stacked on top of one another. We'll see the same here at the RPA, RPA Hospital in Sydney. Doric on the bottom middle is Ionic, and the top level is Corinthian. And I'll try to remember to put the link in the description. We also have the palmets there at the top, which is a ancient connection and not a tip of a hat or the antifixes as they're sometimes called, depends on where they're positioned, but the palmet, this is also a, a nod to ancient Egyptian flood cycles through the Nile, the uh, Arkat, the um, inundation season, there was three seasons of it as the river, the flood, the, yeah, anyway, as you can check those out. There's a better picture, just to get, you know, the, the palmet there as well, that's uh, um, the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, tip of a hat, and Big thanks to them there. I've got excellent treatment there. And so again, that's the RPA. And again, just you see the Corinthian, the Ionic, and the Doric columns. And strong, strong, the RPA was founded by a donation from the Grand Master of the Freemasons in, uh, at the time, Grand Master William Vile. He was given a reward by Prince Alfred after he saved him from an assassination attempt here in Sydney. So that's directly connected masons founded a lot of hospitals but also the salamis stone this ancient uh, unit of convert so measures of length the doric and the ionic as well so that's another you know, weights and measures the quadrivium and also in musical mo mode so the lydian the ionian or, I or ionic and the dorian or the doric as well, so that's another, again, you see the triglyphs as where the Ionic order of architecture will be a little bit more decorative than the uh, Ionic order, the male order. But these units of measure, also, again, I've done plenty of videos before, but the Parthenon themselves, it's a unity point. So, for instance, 48 of the modern foot, which is encoded in the Salamis stone, so the, the modern 12-inch foot that you're used to is not modern, it's actually quite ancient. But so is the Doric and Ionic, and we found that embedded not just in the Salamis stone, but in the architecture itself. So again, is the modern foot based on the king's foot, and it's relatively... No, nah, no, nah, just no. Nah, no, it's not. Um, so around the 1500s, 1600s, in the Renaissance, we saw a rebirth of classical architecture. This is the four corners in, in Sicily, in Palermo, and again, we see the Doric, the Ionic, and the Corinthian order. So this was, uh, again, rebirthed ancient uh, knowledge, especially I recently did one on Da Vinci and showing how even in his drawings and um, he has this same 
thing happening going on. So, and the four corners are uh, also related to the seasons, but that's something else. Palermo, Sicily. So this was around 1550 that this was uh, constructed. The Old State Bank building here in New South Wales in Sydney uh, as well. The same Corinthian, Ionic and Doric. And also recently for the Sydney 2000 Olympics, the Greek government um, donated a statue of Athena. And again, you'll see, again, I was just a recent upload talking about uh, the pediments. But okay, uh, Athena and Medusa go together as well. So there's, I'll try to remember to put those links in the description just for these are recent ones. And again, notice the Doric order and we see the triglyph above that as where it's not incorporated in the other forms. What have we got? Canvas sleeves on the Corinthian order and this, um, oh geez, I forget, the, but anyway, the Ionic order. So we see not just the columns, but even the decorative forms that go with them is in this particular building as well. Uh, colonial, uh, Chief Colonial Secretary's building by, will, uh, by Barnett. And, well, again, we see Corinthian, Ionic and Doric forms of decoration as well as these other art, science, labour, mercy, justice and wisdom. And wisdom, you've even got the little owl there, but that's Athena, the goddess of defensive warfare. The lands department building, the same thing. We have um, the Doric columns, colonnades, the Ionic and the Corinthian order there at the top. So this is all part of an ancient legacy. It goes back quite, quite, quite some time. It's embedded in all different forms, sometimes statues, sometimes buildings, sometimes a little bit more subtle. But again, strength, beauty and wisdom. The Corinthian, the Virgin, strength, Doric, the male and Ionic with uh, the wisdom column of wisdom, the, the maiden. I'm oh, sorry, not the maiden, the woman. The maiden and the woman just like we again we see here so you know um, okay another important thing well this is mason tracing board so what do we have we have a doric column we have an ionic column and we have a corinthian column but also what do we have there we have a level doric ionic corinthian you see the level and on the level as they say you can see that form there and what she carried, she's carrying not only a collateral triangle, nice touch, nice uh, little nod there as well, but also the plumb line to, it's a level. That's what, uh, again, construction tools. Uh, very simple tools. Masons were able to do very amazing things. Uh, and so these are the um, uh, jewels carried by the officers of, of the Blue Lodge there. But again, Senior Warden, we see the level as well there's a cornucopia square the compasses again we see all these ancient masonic um symbols which predate what we what's the freemasons of today are, are a legacy of a much much older stream of knowledge which goes back uh to the romans to the greeks and those before them we'll have a look at that in a moment so the craft guilds uh the, they, for instance they built the great cathedrals here in europe masterpieces of of architecture you'll see even in the Chartres Cathedral and others in the stained glass they're embedded in there and again they're carrying these tools uh, also the symbols which um, would connect to Masons, Odd Fellows and these types of organisations as well. Uh, this is uh, again Cathedral uh, Architects, the level, the compass and the square and again they, these guys were able to do it with you can you can do this. It's uh, it's part of an ancient uh, legacy, and and up until the well, till a very short time ago, they were still using these tools, techniques, and methods before modern. But uh, modern technology come in, and now we've uh, like we've well, uh, not tying. We've lost the ancient skills with simple tools, and we've become addicted to ready-built machinery. Uh, for instance, do we see in like cornerstone ceremonies, uh, in, especially in, in um, like for instance the Washington um, Capitol, U.S. Capitol building in Washington, state capitals. I did a whole series on these, and we see how they use the level to to test the cornerstone. So again, 
the unfinished stone and the finished stone, the corner stones. Uh, sorry, just reached the 15 minute limit. So uh, what we have is the uh, cornerstone ceremony. And again, these tools which are used, for instance, on the level, the level to test the stone, this ceremony, and we also have the square. So um, on the level by the square, square house, uh, these are again either even into our uh, important fra you know phrases regarding truth. It's a you know it's a square deal, square house. He's on the level. Uh, this is again a legacy of of truth and and you know being accurate and correct and lost unfortunately in some in the internets. Uh, so back to the Colosseum, Corinthian, Ionic, and Doric, and so it's again you what it's. Very big mystery in regards to masonry. How did the ancients do the stonework? Well, across the Roman world, they had so many temples, so many beautiful uh, temples, and especially the, the very ornate Corinthian columns in places like uh, Baalbek, Palmyra, again, across the uh, Roman world. Uh, so many even Roman temples, uh, which are called Egyptian temples, are from the Ptolemaic and the Roman times as well. But where did, you know, where did these? Where were these masons trained? Where were these architects trained? This is a still quite a mystery. There's very little written about that, and, and because even to you know, in the, for instance, the masons uh, who built the great cathedrals were very secretive with their art. They were part of the guilds, but also carpenters, glass makers, um, tilers. They would pre not only the craft guilds would only not only were they a mutual aid society. They would look after one another. But they were also uh, quality protectors. They didn't want, you know, they didn't like to see bad stonework. They didn't like to see bad woodwork, and they would guarantee the quality of their work. So if you got a mason or a carpenter from that time, you could be guaranteed that they would do really, really good work. The uh, traveling craftsmen in Germany is again a legacy of this ancient tradition. So there's not much uh, left to be uh, to be read and, and about the the masons and how the Romans were able to lift massive, massive weights, uh, huge weights. It's again said that it's impossible, but well, they did it uh, in the uh, moved uh, obelisks from Egypt. Not just did they move them up the, up, uh, the Nile River, they moved them across the Mediterranean and then up a much, much more difficult terrain. But the skilled masons, craftsmen of that time had uh, skills, amazing skills and abilities. That's, there's really no doubt in that. Um, but so, again, there's the mystery of the Masonic tradition, uh, accepted and uh, free and accepted Masons. Now, you can be of any background and become uh, a Freemason, but, but uh, only a few centuries ago, you had to like, be an architect or a Mason, a tiler in the trade, so to speak. And this was secretive knowledge and, and passed on, but also because this, uh, you know, the certain people would, we almost call it witchcraft, you know, how did he, how did he lift this stuff, oh, it's witchcraft, and people literally got in trouble for uh, doing that. Uh, this is a grave from a uh, Roman surveyor with the grommer, and w what were the Romans doing? They were using exactly the same tools as the uh, Egyptians were. So again, we see these uh, ancient Egyptian stone working tools, with very simple tools, you can do very accurate survey, and this was passed on. So even the, from from Egypt through the Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, on to the Romans, and then on to the uh, later Masons, for instance, the uh, the great cathedrals. And so let me pause a moment. Uh, this carving was um, in, in connected with a Roman aqueduct, and again you see the uh, yeah, just depicting the tools used by the. Uh, Roman masons, and now I'd like to get the dimensions of it because I'd be I'd be willing to bet that the stone itself, both the height, the uh, width, and the perimeter would uh, deliver perfect a uh, unity point between um, different forms of measurement. So, for instance, uh, mentioned earlier the Salamis stone, which incorporates not only the yeah there we go the Salamis stone. So not only do we see the Doric, the Ionic, and the allegedly modern foot uh, shown back in ancient times, but it also contains information the Samian foot, as in Samos, the island of Samos, Pythagoras of Samos, for instance, Aristarchus of Samos, who um, 
put forth the heliocentric model and described the great year back in uh, Greek times, and well, they were heirs of this ancient legacy of knowledge. So both the height, the width, and the perimeter of a Salamis stone, so the height and the width is a conversion point to Ionic and Samian, and the perimeter of the stone is a unity point between multiple sets of measurement at very harmonic numbers, 144, 108, these types of things. And again, you can't make it up and it just wouldn't happen by random. It's just been lost in time as was a, uh, like tears in the rain. So music measurement. The quadrivium, astro astronomical knowledge uh, embedded in legends and traditions and passed on through these societies which had to keep themselves secret. For instance, Hyapatia uh, was um, at the Library of Alexandria. She put developed some ideas in regards to the uh, orbits of the planets. She was killed by a religious mob. Giordano Bruno, killed by the mob for saying the truth and presenting it, but that's what happened so often. The uh, has dogma. A, um, Dogma invariably leads to violence and suppression, and that's the that's why it's necessary. These, you know, it's not. There is an element, no doubt, about certain people suppressing knowledge, but it was also well, if you present knowledge and it's not uh, within the narrative, it's not within the dogma. It, it's not like people will uh, use devious techniques, if not violent techniques, to suppress it. So the suppression of knowledge is not about, not just about certain elites who want to protect it, it also comes from the bottom up, where the mob will be very driven by hatred and, 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 and because of ignorance, because of a challenging accepted ideals, it does lead to suppression, but violence and death. So it's not just the top down, and the same thing could be said as a modern times, it's not just about the 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 one percent you know causing the problems of the world it's also got to do with the 99 percent uh who don't want to take the step to emerge from you know they've got a chip on their shoulder let's put it that way so these tools these uh, ancient traditions and legends have been passed on very important very beautiful but again on the internet it's a uh, you know, if you just do a search, you're going to find 99% of it is, you know, all sorts of, you know, pretty vile accusations on on an organisation, not on the individual, but on the organisation as a whole. And well, I can't abide that. So, Roman masons, Greek masons, Persian, Babylonians, back to Egyptian times, using uh, same tools, using incorporating same themes such as unity points between measurements, uh, pendulums, and and on the level and yep and uh, survey tools and for instance the Roman aqueducts it's often said and it's rightfully said how accurate the pyramids were aligned well the Roman aqueducts took that to the next level they were able to have a higher level of accuracy and they did it through the air not along the ground through the air and again not really talked about amongst certain circles because it challenges the the dogma which invariably leads to problems. So Ionic Doric Corinthian, it's embedded in ancient architecture, modern symbolism and traditions and legends, and it's it's been an unbroken tradition where it's embedded uh, in, uh, especially uh, when literacy wasn't quite as high, the, you, the these symbols, people were more literate in symbolism in previous times as what they, what they would be now. An example would be the, uh, what's it called, the not the chapters of the cross, but for instance, in the church, you see those pictures which tell the story of the crucifixion through pictures rather than in the literal sense. Now we have high literacy rates, we have the printing press, and people are more um, on words. But again, we can we've lost literacy in regards to symbolism as well, and so that's why it's so easy in modern times to attach any sort of accusation to them and say this type of stuff. Even I mean, for God's sake, people call the pentagram demonic. Like, that's the the uh, it's, yeah the height and of of ignorance. Um, now, just yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing if you want. Uh, usually, because for instance, I say the pentagon is pentagram is is demonic, but it actually incorporates the uh, most divine proportions. If you want to go down that route, it's built into uh, creation. 
uh, so either creation was done by this, by Satan or creation was done by God if you want to go that way and well to say these things is is, is uh, a blasphemy anyway weights and measures a quadrivium these symbols and emblems are part of an ancient legacy we find them uh, throughout time and it's embedded in architecture and uh, artistry and sculpture and all these different forms and it's again very um, interesting so again study study and the truth shall set you free have a good one